During my studies, I designed and developed an automatic foosball table scoreboard. So this video will be a summary and demonstration of the foosball table and scoreboard as a whole, as well as an explanation of the code. So here is my scoreboard. It consists of two dual 7 segment displays that are controlled by a Max 7219 LED driver, as well as an Adreno Uno. The maximum score is 99 for both dual 7 segment displays. The circuit is located on this shelf that I added and is powered by this 5 volt battery. The circuit diagram that reveals all the connections in the circuit can be seen on screen. Moving on, I added the legs to create elevation for the shelf as well as create the goals myself so that the ball can have a pathway to land on the switches. The switches are what registers a goal being scored. So when the ball lands on the switch, the score goes up by one. So here are some pictures of me actually inserting the legs onto the table as well as creating the goals and inserting the switches. There was a lot of trial and error to get the perfect angle for the flat wood bits in order to ensure that the ball will land on the switches. But yeah, it was a fantastic feeling when I screwed the wood bits in and the ball actually landed on the switch once it entered the goal. And here's the back of the goal being screwed on. Additionally, I created two PCB boards, one for both of the dual seven segment displays and one for the other electronic components in the circuit. The one shown on screen is for both of the dual 7 segment displays. These were created through PCB etching. What is PCB etching you ask? Well firstly we get a copper board and outline the circuit track with a permanent marker and then we dip the board in an acidic solution such as a ferric chloride solution for about 10 minutes. This will remove all the copper that isn't protected by the permanent marker and the reason why we leave the board in the solution for 10 minutes is to ensure that the acid doesn't eat away at the permanent marker outlines. So then the board is removed and sandpaper is used to sand away the permanent marker outlines leaving only the copper track which can be seen on screen. And so, after PCB etching, the electronic components were able to be soldered onto the PCB boards. And then were hot glued to the shelf along with the Adreno Uno. Coming back to the demonstration of the foosball table scoreboard, I implemented a seven second delay for the switches in the code. So, when the switch is first pressed, there is a seven second delay before the switch can be activated again. The reason for this is that during playtesting, people would fumble the ball. And also, sometimes be a bit too slow to pick the ball up as they were reacting to a goal being scored. After testing, 7 seconds seemed to be the perfect delay time. Improvements in this electrical system include adding buttons to the outside of the table that control the scoreboard so that users can change the score in cases where the system incorrectly registers a goal being scored. Furthermore, the use of an LDR resistor and laser or an ultrasonic sensor could be superior options in detecting goals rather than a manual switch. And so yeah, that's the summary and demonstration of the fusible table and scoreboard as a whole. So now I'll move on to the code. So here's the code. At the start, we include the LED control library. Like any library in programming, it saves a significant amount of time as we do not need to worry about things like defining functions. For example, we do not need to define what this LED control function does as that has already been established in the LED control library. We can just immediately use it. So here, the LED control function is used to define what pins of the Max 7219 LED driver are connected to the Adreno Uno. In this case, they are pins 12, 11, and 10. The one is included to signify that there is only one Max 7219 that is connected to the Adreno Uno. We then initialize a variable that will hold the score, and then we initialize some variables that will hold the left digit of the score and the right digit of the score. So for example, if the score is 12, then left digit will equal one, and right digit will equal two. Or if the score is eight, then left digit will equal zero, and right digit will equal eight. Here, we define what pins the switches are connected to the Adreno Uno, in this case, two and three. Then we debounce the switches. What does debouncing mean, you ask? Well, when a mechanical switch is pressed once, the lever often makes it breaks contact with the button many times rapidly. So, there's a micro-motional lever going up and down. This means that the circuit will register the switch being pressed multiple times, even though it was only pressed once. So, what the bouncing does is it ensures that this micro-motion is not detected as a switch press. That way, when you press the switch, the circuit will only register a singular switch press. So then here we turn on the Max 7219 and then we set the brightness of the LEDs inside both of the dual 7 segment displays. Here this is a medium intensity and then we clear both dual 7 segment displays to make sure that nothing is shown. So all the LEDs on both dual 7 segment displays are off. And then here we put two zeros on both dual 7 segment displays. So here we check if one of the switches has been pressed. So, for example, if switch 1 has been pressed, then the variable that holds the score will increase by 1. Then this part of the code splits the score into two digits. So how this all works is that left digit takes a score value and divides it by 100 and then it saves the remainder of that calculation and then left digit will equal to whatever the answer is to that remainder being divided by 10. This differs for right digit because right digit will simply equal the remainder of the score value being divided by 10. So let's use two examples to clarify how the code is able to split the score into two digits. 
digits. So, for example, let's say the score is 1. For left digit, 1 divided by 100 has a remainder of 1. So taking that remainder and dividing it by 10, 1 divided by 10 is equal to 0.1. As left digit has been defined as an integer and not a floating point, it does not save the decimal place, and so left digit will equal 0. For right digit, 1 divided by 10 has a remainder of 1, and therefore right digit will simply equal 1. Therefore, this 7 segment display will show 0, 1, which is correct. Another example, let's say the score is 20. For left digit, 20 divided by 100 has a remainder of 20. So, taking that remainder and dividing it by 10, 20 divided by 10 is equal to 2. So left digit will equal 2. For right digit, 20 divided by 10 has remained of 0, and so right digit will equal 0. Therefore, this 7 segment display will show 2, 0, which is correct. I hope that clarifies how the code is able to split the score into two digits, because honestly, this is probably the most important part of the code. So, then after the score has been split into two separate digits, those digits are sent to the dual 7 segment display to be displayed. Finally, we have the 7 second delay defined for the switches here. So, when the switch is first pressed, there is a 7 second delay before the switch can be activated again. And this delay also helps you to bounce the switch. Again, it was determined to be 7 seconds after playtesting. And then this part of the code does the exact same thing that the switch 1 code does, except it does it for switch 2. The other switch. And there we go, that's the, uh, that's the code. So, this brings it into this video. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. I appreciate you watching. Thank you, and goodbye.